candle. Look up Butter Candle and that damn woman, Hoodoo Delish, with the her white ass. And if you go into that group, she refuses to allow you to actually talk about race because she says that it leads to hard conversations. Let me tell you something, y'all. And I mean this shit in my soul. Not only am I, am I, have I started to walk the spiritual path, but I have walked the mundane path of looking and examining race and racism in society. You cannot say you practice hoodoo any type of hoodoo in what we call the United States of America and not acknowledge the historical connection, the beginnings of that tradition had when they took ancestors from the dams, uh, our damn homelands in Africa, shipped them over to across the ocean and put us all throughout what we now call North and South America. You would not have hoodoo if it was not for the descendants of, of, of the enslaved black folks who came over here learning the land, learning the magic of this land, and incorporating that with the cosmology of what they did back in the day on their own lands and creating something new. Hoodoo is a religious practice that turned into a magic practice of resistance and engagement with the land. If you refuse to acknowledge that history and presence because it's, it's too hard for you, then you ain't doing hoodoo. You're doing some, some voodoo, kudu, voodoo, but it's not hoodoo. And if we can't acknowledge that, then you need to understand and you need to stop learning from some of these non-Black um, non practitioners who refuse to engage in that. Now let's talk about the Black practitioners who also perpetuate this shit, right? If you want to talk about and be a leader of these practices, and I'm going to focus on hoodoo right now, and then you also refuse in these groups or in these mentorings to not address the historical components of it in the ways race and racism impact and are part of that history. You too are doing the work of white supremacy and you are moving against what the ancestors did this religious practices and vegetable practices for. That's where I stand on it. And I think that not knowing the history, not knowing where these things come from, if y'all really interested, I recommend reading Mojo Workins. Um, it's a great book that talks about this historical context of hoodoo and how it did used to be a religion. And then based upon post-slavery and then the Great Migration, it shifted and got commodified and commercialized, right? And then sold back to us um, when we moved to the cities. If you can't understand that history, then your ability to really actually conjure or be a root worker or be one that engages with the elements in the land will not be as robust, right? Because when you went through your own initiation to God, did you not learn the history? History of the land, history of the practices, history of the spirits, history of resistance. They make us write dissertations. Tiana and Simone will tell you. They, like, Matt Poto was like, hey, yeah, theirs is short, was shorter than mine, but like Matt Poto was like, they got to write a 15 page paper. They have, like, you have to know. You're not going to conzo in my house if you don't know that stuff prior to. Like, so, uh, yes, yes. Yes, because it's called work, right? It's called spiritual work. And let me tell y'all, when you die, don't mean you stop working. When you die, that's when you really go to work. Exactly. And so your job, and Oshun oh, Bunke has talked about this on your previous shows with you, your job at this time in your life on this earth is to elevate yourself so that when you do pass, you can become an exalted ancestor and not go right back into the milieu to come back maybe at a lower stage in life because you refuse to learn the lessons of this life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, let's move into, let's move into another type of integration, which is Nini integrating herself into the damn housewives and what type of hoodoo she needs to do to get back on the good side of- The castmates? Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, so, hmm. I yeah. mean, I've, I, I haven't been particularly shocked that this shit has been happening with Nene. I think that um, every person on reality television has their day. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm waiting for people that be making butter candles to have their days as well and <laughs> pulled out the paint. But um, I don't know if Nene is exactly getting pulled out the paint. I feel like the production wants us to want us to pull her out the paint. But I'm not exactly Team Kenya. You know, <laughs> like I don't think there's any way that you can get me to be like, yeah. Like Kenya was right. Like I, I, I mean, it is what it is. I don't. I mean, I don't care. It's, it's, it's I don't care. I, I when Nene and Kenya argue, Nene is always right to me. I don't know how I see it as a hero. Some people see it as neutral. Some people be team Kenya, but I'm always Nene is right. What is, you know? Do you watch? I mean, obviously you watch Housewives, Wayne. Mm -hmm. Even pretend, but like, what do you think about this season of Nene being the black sheep? 
but she used to be a queen. You know, like, I got it, but I didn't, right? Because all them women at one point or another have been meanie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They've all been on the outside. Remember when Portia got basically ostracized when she when she threw Kenya across the damn stage during that reunion? Yep, yep. You know, and she got she had to she had to rectify herself and redeem herself. You know, the whole Phaedra thing with Candy with Candy and stuff. Mm. Um, I think that hold on, I'm recording. I'm recording. You gotta go. Sorry, that's my child, y'all. So it's uh. <laughs> Nene is somebody who paved the way for the Housewife franchise to really be where it is today. She's one of them OGs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something, what I think this reflects in society is how much we throw away people when we feel as if they have, um, they, they're too old, right? Or somehow they're not that shiny, fresh and new. We don't, we have this fetish on youth and you can see it in the housewives, right? Because as they get older, they try to look younger, right? And then all next thing you know, if you look at like Kim Dulcie, she came on there looking forty-five when she was twenty-nine. The bad wigs. You don't like her wig. The wig she had first two seasons. The first two seasons. I mean, she never really. Like, she. I mean, real recently, she was getting them lace fronts. Like the last time she was on there, she was. Wow. Uh, she was like Kim Zosia Kardashian. And um, mm -hmm. the lace front didn't look fronty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, it looked natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I remember she used to get like Derek J to style those wigs and they would still be ugly. A hot mess. A hot ass mess, right? Okay, back to ageism. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh, yeah, no, but it's the same thing though, right? So all of this is evolution. I mean, Nene face don't look the same like she did the first season. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and so what you start to see is these women, they start to be caricatures of themselves. They try to remain relevant. And I say, listen, if you want to be the OG, be the old damn G. There ain't no need to sit here and genuflect the folks that I told you how they feel about you. Own that shit. That's Nene's show right now. Well, it's actually Portia's show. But Nene could sit there, her and Nene was smart to, um, to have a relationship back with Portia because they are like yin and yang right now to me. I'm wondering, like, it is a Portia show. Like, Portia came on the show and just took it over. Like, no, I, I do think that I do think that Portia is the face of Housewives. Like, I, I mean, Nene, it's like Nene and Kenya are like two sides of the same coin to me. Yep. But Portia is like what Housewives should be. Yes, and you see, you saw her grow too. What I appreciate yeah. about Portia, you saw her actually grow up. Uh huh. And into herself. Yeah, I remember when she didn't even know what the Underground Railroad was. No. And now she can say multiple syllable words. <laughs> like, I mean, she has really, that vocabulary has, has she, I mean, she went from like a, a toddler's vocabulary to like a 10th grade reading level, like dead ass. <laughs> like, I'm so proud of her. So proud. But I also think Portia understands character development in the show. I don't think Portia was ever that slow the first few seasons, but she was playing a character, and she let that character evolve over time. That makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? So she's smart. Portia is much smarter than folks they were credit for. She was Christian when she first got on the show. Uh-huh. I remember she would talk about prayer and uh -huh. God. And Not talk about pop, pop, pop. You know what I mean? Like. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wonder what her ancestors thinking. Hey, get that bag, girl. Get that bag. Anyway, let's um let's do a reading on Nene to see, you know, um, well, you know, let's see how can she go about reintegrating herself into the the housewives cast. Okay. How can Nene Leaks integrate herself back into the housewives cast? Can integrate herself now. And I'm using the Afro Goddess deck, y'all. This is a beautiful deck made by a black woman, and it, it just speaks. All right. So let's see what the spirits say. Mm -hmm. Well, this is an interesting spread. 
Player five is nine pentacles. This is real interesting. All right, so let's see what the spirits are saying about me. Okay. You doing this reading too, or is this me? No, I'm waiting on you. Wow. Okay. All right. All right, y'all. So what can Nene needs to do to integrate herself back into the Housewives cast? So I'm using my spirit board that Huganzo created. It's got six houses. So when I say this house up, I'll explain what that means to y'all. So in the house of Mercury, which is the T, the situation, y'all, Nene tired. So I got the Ten of Wands, right? And if you see, this woman's got a whole bunch of things in her head and she's been through some battles and she's trying to figure out some stuff and she can see the future, but she's tired. So right now, Nini is actually tired of all this fight, right? This is not what she signed up for. And what she thought she was going to do is she thought that she was going to, and this is clarified by the Three of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, and the Son of Swords. So Nini thought she was going to be able to at least get one or two folks, that women that she was going to be able to align with because she knows that her money is tied up in her ability to be able to work with other women on this cast because she feels like she done, but oh, she also feels like, man, she been doing this for over seven years. She done sat there and put her due in. She done sat here and put her time in and stuff in. So for her, she's feeling as if that she had to almost like last minute this season, she was just like flying by the seat of her pants, the son of wands, right? She was trying to figure out what to go and what was going on because she thought that she had already done what she needed to do, right? The seven of pentacles to be able to secure her bag. But then she realized that she got turned on. Now, what's in what she can do in her house of agency, which is her son, which is how, what she's in control of. I got the god of pentacles, clarified by justice, the magician, and the Three of Wands, child, Nini going to have to have to do some prayers and magic. So what she has right now is the is the God of Pentacles, as you can see here. It's a God, it's a man, and full of abundance. What she is, is she sees herself as somebody that knows how to secure her bag and, and, and be able to, she sees herself as basically the foundation of this housewives. So even though she is tired, to me, she is like, nah, y'all, I done made this show how it was. And this is my domain. This is my abundance place. So what you're not going to do is tell me that somehow I'm not going to be able to continue on being me in this show. Now, how do I know that? It's clarified by Justice, the Magician, and the Three of Wands. So what I see here is that Nene is a powerful manifester, right? Because let's be real, where Nene came from and where she is now, that ain't nothing but a prayer and, and some powerful manifestations. But Nene also, Nene also knows that she needs to seek some balance right now in her life because where she wants to go and where she is now is a road that she knows that she has made some issues with and she's going to have to rectify this is why she was so keen on trying to make these relationships, quote unquote, work. Part of it was for the show, but part of it was she was like, I don't want no residual karma coming back on me because she's trying to figure out that she's being led by her intuition, the three of swords, the three of wands. As you can see, this woman is being led by her intuition, which is the blue, um, the blue rhino on a road that she can't fully see yet, but she knows that if she's trusting herself, again, she is the magician, right? She can sit here and manifest what she's doing that she, can, that she can figure out what's the best way. Because what's not in her control, which is the house of structure, which is Saturn. Saturn is that planet that is your karma, your lessons, it's your boundaries. Again, it's bounded, right, by those rings. What Nene feels right now is that she's a seven of wands, what's not in her control. She will have to continue to defend her position. Now, she, she's been victorious and she still will be, but, her, but what's not in her control is that her ability to defend herself, that is what the, what the producers want. So behind the scenes, what is not in her control is what the others, the other six women, right? Because how many, there's seven of them, right, on that show? Are there seven? Y'all look that up. Uh, there are six, Marlo, Tanya, I mean, six people on the show, six plus some friends, right? So she's going to defend herself against those other women um, going forward. That's seven of Wands? Seven of Wands. Does, is it uh, Seven Wands pointing against her? Doesn't she have one? It's six Wands pointed against her, her, the one holding the seventh. Who else would be against her? Um, 
It could be the producers of the show itself. Well, I know four of the cast members. I, I think she's probably only friends with Portia and Marlo. And Marlo. You got Cynthia and Tanya and Candy and Nina. And, uh, Tanya. Tanya. That's six. Anyway. Anyway. Well, they'll figure it out. Exactly. They ain't in her control, right? Because right now, I was not in her control, but she actually is on delicate balance. Now, I want y'all to see this. I got both the two of, of pentacles, but also the two of wands. So what this is saying is that her money and her creativity are in a balance right now. And she's going to have to, there's going to be some tough choices that they're that, that are out of her control. So what this is telling me, along with the hermit, is that in this time of isolation right now, in this quarantine, out of her control is other people making decisions that will impact her money and her ability to be creative in her own way. And when I see creative, I mean how she portrays herself and how she'll act on the show. Does that make sense, y'all? Who gone? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I hear you. So, and again, the house of, so then this is further clarified in the house of judge and judgment. And what that is is the house of Pluto. Now, Pluto is a bitch of a planet. It is a the planet of destruction, but also the planet of transformation. And what she has here is the two of swords, another two, right? Clarified by the five of wands, the five of swords, who and the ten of swords. So you reap what you sow. So in the house of judge and judgments, there's the two of swords, right? She can't see in her ability to figure out what she's actually going to do next is up in the air. But the problem is, well, for her is that this is also what she is being judged for, y'all. And look at these cards: the five of the five of wands the five of swords, and then we have the ten of swords, right? So what this is saying is that her past conflicts and the ways in which she herself backstabbed some folks in the past, there's four women and she's got this sword, the, sorry, this, the sword that is cutting her tongue, her mouth got her into trouble and it isolated some key folks that actually were um, behind her and wanted her to actually succeed. So this is a bitter end because she has been betrayed, but she has also been the betrayer. So what this is telling me is that in her house of judge and judgment, the things that have occurred so far are part of the things that she was judged for, and this is part of the balance being sought. So what, I'm, what I mean by this, y'all, is that it's cyclical, right? She was always going to eventually be the one in the hot seat because of what she did in the past to other people on that show. Now, interestingly enough, in our house of blessings is the three of swords. The House of Blessings is Jupiter. Jupiter is that planet that gives you your hopes and wishes and things like that. So let's clarify this Three of Swords. It's clarified by the Empress, the God of Cups, and the Star. Who? Nini actually has a lot of protection around her spiritually. And again, she's a big powerful manifestor. So the blessing is her having this heartache, her being, her feeling the wrath of what she has also put out there is making her randomly a little bit humble in her own respects. So this is a blessing for her. She needed to be humbled as a way to have her understand that her power does not need to come through all this backstabbing and cussing out and, and you know, that, that kind of nasty country ass way. She'd be talking to folks when she's pissed off with all the P's and the C's and all that shit, you know, like, she needed to learn a lesson, and this is the lesson she learned. This is actually a blessing for her, because in all of this, what she's going to realize is that, is Nina Leo? Sagittarius. Huh, Sagittarius? Okay. But what I get here, though, is Nini is somebody that can create. She's a creator, and, she's a, and, she's a, and she is somebody that actually can, can bring all these elements of the different queens together. So the Empress becomes the embodiment of all the queens in the tarot the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, and the Queen of Swords. Now, what does that mean? It means that all those different attributes of the queens that they occupy, the Queen of Pentacles is a woman of abundance and of the home, the Queen of Cups is somebody who controls their emotions, so on and so forth. The Empress embodies all of those elements together because she is the one that can create. So the blessing is, is in this heartache and betrayal and, and this strife that she has found, she's actually figuring out her core and who she is. So I know folks thought that Nini was on some BS, that whole spiritual trip last, last season, or this past season, or this, I guess the season right now. It's not necessarily, the, um, it was not necessarily a, um, uh, just for the storyline. She really is trying to figure out who the hell she is. And I think that's because the God of Cups right here. Now, 
I would say this is her husband, but I'm not going to also be very clear. I'm not very sure because I know they are up and down, but I think his, his cancer scare did a lot for her and thinking about what his life and what his relationships. And it's allowed her to kind of open up her third eye and tap in and figure out what is it that she wants. This is the star. And if you see on this card, the third eye is open as this woman is pouring out, right, in order for her to be able to balance and to think about what it is she wants going forward. Because the outcome is the nine of pentacles, right? And it's clarified by the son of wands, the six of wands, and the six of swords. What this means is that Nini's outcome is if she can figure out how to be able to connect with at least two other women on this show going forward, this will allow her to not only go get away from defending herself, to actually being the, the victor and having people not bow down, but at least concede to her. So it's not gonna be antagonistic. So in her house of structure, what she ain't got to control over is the, is the seven of wands. She's gotta defend herself. But in the outcome, if she can go back and think about what it is that brought her here, who she is and the abundance and the foundation she has, she doesn't need to be center stage. She needs to understand that she laid the foundation and she's opened up the door for the next woman, this nine of pentacles, to come in and be able to grow her own. I read this as Portia. She would be better off working with Portia, kind of almost mentoring her again in a real way, and some way to usher in this kind of new blood, the son of wands, that will actually solidify her place as the queen, right, of that show, because she now has a protege that is who is worth her, and this will allow her to think about what her next steps are in her journey of life, the Six of Swords. So long story short, what Nini can do is kind of, she's going to have to eat that ego a little bit. She's going to have to remember who she is, but she ain't got to keep talking about who she is and think about this heartache and this strife is not only reaping what you sow, but also a blessing in the side so that Nini can stop all this outward and eh, eh, and start to figure out what her next steps are because housewives ain't going to be forever, but she needs to think about the legacy she's going to leave and who will have her back when she does eventually go. And right now what I'm seeing, it's at least Portia and one other woman because of this three of pentacles that started the, uh, the beginning of the reading. So that is the reading. Well, let me see what I get. Um, yes. What does Nini need to do to reintegrate herself into Housewives, Housewives cast? Keep mine simple and sweet so we can close the show out. Yeah, sorry y'all. I'll be, I'll be, my spirits are long winded telling all kinds of stuff. No, that's fine. I'm not trying to, um, I ain't trying to really spill, spill no tea, so whatever the spirits say, but I'll tell you. Okay, so let's see what I get. Six of spades. Six of hearts. Three of diamonds. Seven of clubs, ten of spades, eight of diamonds. Um, so in her house of spiritual challenges, it's the six of spades, which is like the card. Um, the six of spades, the nine of spades, and the ace of spades all represent like the ending or letting go of something. So the six of spades is like karmic payback. So I'm saying what we saw earlier. You have five of wands. Five of Swords and the Ten of Swords. Um, this captured in this card. It's in her house of spiritual challenges. Therefore, one of Nini's challenges right now is how to deal with karmic payback that may cause her to be unemployed. Um, also, there are six people on the cast. It's a spade card, so there's an inherently negative association here with her and the rest of the cast. Um, the Six of Hearts, which is talking about success or not success, but it's talking about success in relationships. But right now, um, what I heard was that what I just heard in my ears is that her marriage is pretty fragmented right now. Um, and she, uh, her intuition tells her to use that for a storyline. Um, uh, or to, or that she may be divorcing or breaking up, but she's not, she's not really in love with her husband in the same way. They do have a very deep friendship is what I see. But then I have the three of diamonds, which is talking about unemployment. So what needs to be organized is that Greg ass ain't working. Um, I do. <laughs> I'll be seriously, this is what I'm hearing. Greg's not working, so she brings some of her drama to the set um, about that. 
um, him not working, and then him with this three of diamonds here, it talks about like he's probably working on different. He's probably working on whatever Nini's working. He's probably assisting with that, but has no venture of his own really. Um, we have the seven clubs. So, um, and this is in our house of hidden. So, um, basically, basically, uh, he is home right now because she recognizes that there are forces greater than her um, that she has to answer to. And right now, she's just like, you know, things are up in the air as far as me being able to stay on the show or not. Now, the Seven of Clubs is also speaking about how it is that Nini, um, how it is that Nini is, um, she's trying to have a lot of faith through the situation, but it will be her faith that gives her. So what I said earlier is that she has powerful spirits around her. With this Seven of Clubs here, it's like the card of like manifestation. So mm -hmm. she's a very powerful manifester. Now, I got the Ten of Spades and the best path to take. So she's working overtime to either stay relevant or to, she's, Going to keep drawing, drawing attention, but that's part of her job. The tennis space doesn't really indicate drama; it just indicates that somebody's overworked, or that they are they are. Um, and the ten also indicates that they're doing it for the public. So there's a lot of stuff that she's doing right like as of right now. People are putting in the comments out, but they don't know she's doing. But she's doing she's doing off of cameras to draw much attention around. She's not having tennis space. So it's what she's doing still leading people to believe that she's going to be getting out for the cast. Now, she has is a, yeah, right now, voice is breaking up. Oh, sorry. I was saying, um, shit. What was, what was the last thing you heard me say? It was just going in and out with the last two cards, and then as she's transitioned over. Oh, so um, this uh, ten of spades and the six of spades together are basically her working hard not to um, get people's uh, predictions that she may be being ousted uh, due to her negativity. Mm -hmm. um, so she's working overtime to prove that she's going to stay on the show but she's still using negative energy to stay there because that's why we have another spade um the eight of diamonds is speaking about fame popularity financial her financial success so this means that she's going to be able to stay on the show um at least for another season however with this eight of diamonds here it could mean that she is a cast member amongst eight people mm -hmm. um, which would make sense because they're going to obviously have a friend of the show Maybe if you take Marlo and Tanya, you know, they both, they will make a cast or whatever. But uh, no, she's, she's going to stay on the show, but I don't, the cards are like, I mean, this is what I can predictably say. Well, let me not even predict. Let me see. Is she going to be negative and nasty? <laughs> oh, nasty and so rude with the four of hearts, ten of clubs, seven of hearts. The producers are telling telling her to show fan problems, not her marriage problems, to issue her family. And that'll help you to fall in love with her again. Yeah. 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 Sorry, sorry. Uh, it's just internet. But the four of hearts, the ten of clubs, and the seven of hearts is saying that the producers are telling her that she needs to showcase more from her family problems rather than her marital problems. Mm -hmm. The ace of spades, the king of hearts, and the queen of spades. She's thinking about raising her husband again, but she's also afraid that he's going to die. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's it's like her storyline is gonna be about Greg. He's sick. He's almost gonna die. He's, it's never gonna be about her children, her family, her actual family problems. She refused to address. So it makes in that. And what just showed me in my eyes. I remember I watched one episode of her wedding special, and I remember talking with Greg's family about different things that she was sharing when she was on my dad. All the things that I feel like producing like more of. She's not gonna do it. No, like, you know, you you keep breaking up. It's like, man, man, yeah. Damn, 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 damn. I wonder. Well, you're 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 not you're not buffering or anything. It's just the voice. Okay. Well, it's just saying that my speaker is not working. Okay. But yeah, um, essentially what I was saying was that Nene is put in a position where the producers are asking her to raise raise more awareness that she has family problems that are outside of grade. What's going on with your children? What's going on with your grandchildren? No, no. What's going on with your family history? She not she will not do that. And that's but her next storyline is like gonna be about Greg possibly dying. 
So I got a king, I got a king of hearts, a queen of spades, and an ace of spades, which indicates that she she predicts that she predicts that Greg is gonna pass away. Um and that, let me see. I feel like and this does she feel like he's gonna pass because of COVID? Because mm. it's more susceptible. Queen of Spades, the Eight of Spades, King of Hearts, Ace of Diamonds, Two of Hearts, Queen of Diamonds. I mean, she she's definitely predicting that she will be single. Um, Greg got a nice ass health ins uh, health insurance policy too, um, mm -hmm. because she came up as a Queen of Diamonds, so it's like. Uh, when he passes, she's gonna get a, receive a large sum of money. I wouldn't even be surprised if she does if she goes and tries to like she may try to buy another house. Five of hearts, seven of diamonds, three of spades. It's a gamble. She feels she feels very she feels very nervous about COVID. She's not she's not putting in her head that Greg is gonna die due to COVID or anything like that. But she's very nervous. And she's very protective of him too. Um, she, even though they fight, she doesn't want to see him die, and especially not to that particular disease. I don't know why I just did that reading, but I'm just being nosy anyway. So, yeah, girl. So we have some similarities in our readings, then. Uh huh. No, I, I saw very much similar similar shit that you saw. Same exact thing. Let's see a message for Nini from her ancestors. Close it out. Um, the two of diamonds, hmm. the three of spades, the ace of spades. I ain't even gonna read. I'm not. I can't. I can't. I can't with this. The Joker. I can't with this reading. If I say, okay, I'm gonna just say it. The seven of clubs, the queen of clubs. Intuitively, she knows that her husband is gonna pass away. Like she, mm -hmm. um, the three of spades indicates like his health is declining. The ace of spades is his, is, uh, represents the death. The Joker is more so unpredictable, but it's in reverse. So it indicates that like he's jovial, he's happy, but he's pretending he's pretending to be happy, even though he's having to put constantly not just protect himself from COVID, but just protect himself from the energy of death. The two of diamonds indicates that she's paying money to keep him alive. But I also feel like she's paying for him to have a caretaker as well. The King of Spades, Five of Diamonds, and the Jack of Clubs. Yeah, he has. I, I think he has like a caretaker. Um, either very feminine. Uh, this person's a feminine. Uh, maybe a guy. Maybe a woman. Um, but Greg doesn't want to be taken care of. Um, also, I think that there may be this five of diamonds indicates like changing values. So this could also indicate that he's exchanging. He has he may have somebody on the side that he's giving money to, and he no longer values his mono, like monogamy with he and Nini because of the decl declining health and how she's treating him because of his declining health. And Nini's Nini's cheating on him. There's uh, I got the Joker, the Ace of Hearts, and the Three of Clubs. Um, there's a new relationship that she's in. It's a very, very new relationship. That's that God of clubs. I, that's that God of cups I had in that blessing. I was like, I'm, this ain't her husband. A new one? Remember when I said the God of cups, I was like, it could be her husband. I said, I don't, I don't think that's her husband. That's a man somewhere that she's... I'm saying it's a new husband. But... That's what I'm asking. Like, anyway, I got the three of clubs, which is talking about um, an extramarital affair, not just a three-way love situation, an extramarital affair. Yeah. Who's this man that Nene with? There's three cards, three cards. Who's this man that Nene with? Who this man? Who this new man that Nene with? Because that house of blessings, it was, yep, somebody coming in the mid, but that's her blessing. She sees that as, that's her hope. That's her shining star. That's going to open her up. Who's 
Son of Pentacles, Seven of Cups, the Chariot. He's real, he's younger than her. Do you think he's younger than her? Um, let me see. Or, he got, or, he, or he's somebody that like got his own money or something. But like I got the Son of Pentacles for Let's describe the guy. Six of Spades. The Joker. Ten of Hearts. Eight of Spades. Nine of Spades. Uh, he's very private. He's very private. He does not want to be in public. He does not want to be in the public. He has a youthful energy because he came up as a Joker. Um, okay. But he's a shapeshifter. Um, mm -hmm. the space here, like he, the the six of space and the nine of space indicates that if this, if he, if she tells, if people know who he, he has to go her to keep them from, uh, keep the information from being valid. He lives in another state. I got a six of hearts, a five of space. He lives in another state. They are in a relationship. Ten of spades. He works a lot. King of diamonds. He owns his own business. King yep. of diamonds. Got two. Look at that young, a uh, younger energy who owns yep. who owns own stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. He owns his own business. Huh? I said he owns his own business. Let me see a little bit more. Um, two of clubs, two of diamonds, seven of diamonds. He and Nini are talking about. He and Nini talk about doing business together. Um, mm -hmm. the diamonds. They they um they make a lot. They make a lot of money together. And I got the chariot. I got the chariot for that. The Queen of Spades. Nene is not in love with Greg anymore. She's in love with like this. Well, she's loving this new dude. She still loves Greg, but she's loving this new dude. Um, well, she keeps coming up as the Queen of Spades, so she knows that she she thinks of herself as a single woman. But mm -hmm. she, she's angry at Greg too. Mm -hmm. It's not like she wants. I don't think she really wanted to not be monogamous. I, I think that she's been pushed to this point. That's what I'm saying. You know what's funny? That's what I got to see because I clarified the chariot and got the nine of pentacles, the lovers, and the eight of wands. So for her, this is this is a new road open. Like it was, it was a new it was a new idea because she she thought about this a lot. Like it wasn't like she jumped into this. Like she had and so she was like, what are my options right now? And so she jumped, and so this is a new thing for her. And that nine of pentacles coming up again, that eight of wands with the limbs and the lovers. It's like she literally shot, like she's like shooting her shot and trying to figure, look outward right now because she wants uh, she wants to have more. Nini is actually somebody, what I keep getting here because all these pentacles and how it's showing up, is she somebody that really values like having comfort, having stability, having grounding, having, you know, folks like she likes that coreness. And right now this man is providing her a, 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 a kind of stability in a time of a lot of confusion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. And uh, does Greg know? Well, what are Greg's feelings about this? Six of Hearts, Ace of Eight of Spades, Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts, Six of Diamonds, Nine of Spades. Greg is like Greg is an OG. He's like I still got I still got Nene. I'm still married to her. The Six, the King of Hearts, and the Queen of Hearts are here. So he's like he's happy that he got Nene pregnant. And he's like, he's like, we got kids together. I've actually married her. We've been, we've had a wedding twice. Um, he ain't ready to let her go. That nine, of, this nine of spades is here. He's, he's not. He's going to hold on to this. He's going to have to die before their divorce. He's going to fight for this. He's going to fight for his relationship. The five of spades, ten of spades, the four of hearts, um, two of diamonds, queen of diamonds. Jack of Hearts. I guess she can't really travel due to quarantine, and I think this Jack of Hearts is her son. I know she got two of them, but I think this Jack of Hearts is her son. So he's just happy that he's happy that they're all in quarantine together. He with his kids. He with his wife. Um, watch this two of diamonds keep coming up. The Joker, the King of Spades, 
the ten of hearts. Because she's not, he knows she ain't gonna fuck up her bag by trying to introduce, like, he's trying to go public with the guy. So it's just something for her to do. He knows about it, but she, Nene is trapped. Like, she's like, she's damned if she does, she's damned if she don't. In, in, in her marriage, she feels that she's trapped and stuck with Greg. Okay, let's get out of this woman business. That, that, I love Nene too. I love <laughs> Nene too. You wouldn't get a peach if you shoved, even if you shoved it up your pussy. That's what I'm saying, that country ass, nasty ass mouth. Exactly, girl. Ugh. Mm. Anyway, this was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. So yeah, hit them fire emojis, hit them skull emojis. If y'all enjoyed this reading, bitch. Um, <laughs> anyway. I want to highlight something. I want to highlight something. If, when y'all you know, look at these readings, if you see how the differences of me and who Gonzo read, it's the difference of our spirits, right? And how our spirits read. So mom will go all deep in and read your whole life and then get you an answer. Well, who Gons will tell you right to the teeth what's going on. So if you're thinking about booking with us, think about how our read, how our spirit's talking, what you actually need. Don't be coming with no questions that don't make no sense because spirit will tell you they don't make no damn sense. Oh yeah. Make sure that y'all book readings with us at www.blackspectrumnetwork.com. Um, Dr. Truesdale or Dr. T, T-E-A, Dr. T. She's, um, she's offering a special right now where you can get 30 minutes with her for $55. Mm -hmm. um, I'm running a special, my coronavirus special, so y'all hop on that because these specials are going to be over at the end of the month of May. Um, yes. And enroll in mentorship. Check out our bone reading class that's on the Acuity. You'll see uh, flyers going up for that. Well, you probably, by the time y'all seen this video, you'll see a flyer going up for, for all of that. But anyway. Yes, and if you need your life together, I'm a life coach and I will help you get it. With that being said, I leave you all with these words of wisdom. Uh, I leave you all with these words of wisdom for the rest of the to these hoes. What would Jesus do? I've been your reader for today, Huganzo, and this is my lovely co-host. Dr. Truza, also known as Dr. T. And we will see you next week for another episode of Corona Sundays. Bye! <laughs> Sip some tea with Dr. T. Let's sip, let's call it sip some tea with Dr. T. Sip some tea with Dr. T. And we'll I said, all the tea you need here. Actually, shit, this is the reading. Because it's got to have the reading intro and outro. So. Okay, perfect. Well, thank y'all for tuning in to the reading. Producer of Black Space Network. The truth is collaborative. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. So fuel my fire, take me high, I'll be your liar too Cause when we're here, there's nothing better than the skyline view Ooh.